Is it hard to get a job in Europe? Uh, it's not necessarily harder. It, it's the networks are there, right? So, for example, Veronica Christian is connected, very, very heavily connected with the European entrepreneurial finance. Uh, Alex Marshall is he straddles both. Veronica is new, uh, so she's she's at Schema. Schema is very big because they've got their campuses in Nice, they've got Lille, so they've got lots of campuses. I think that the problem is the network there. So, for example, like Nicola, right? So Nicola would be very easily marketable within Europe because everybody knows his supervisor. So and and they know that his supervisor he he will be working with his supervisor mm -hmm. forever, right? Um, so so and it's, you're connected to the Milano Polytech, some technical Milano, Bocconi, um, mm -hmm. that it's so you're competing against them. Do you want to start? <laughs> Good morning all, welcome to the 13th week, last week of presentations in the class, <laughs> we have the next week online, followed by our own papers presentation. So uh, as uh, Joy was rightly mentioning, this was a very interesting paper and I was wondering why uh, m was in our entrepreneurial finance class and after reading that uh, I completely understood. The idea is that uh, generally there are more papers and a lot of research work in m and in listed uh, companies area. But I think this was the first paper I have uh, seen uh, m and in uh, unlisted companies targeting startups or entrepreneurial finance. So other uh, details, we are already are aware of it. So quickly on uh, uh, m and uh, it is uh, initiated by the seller or the buyer out of their own interest uh, for uh, synergy values. Sometimes it may happen uh, through third parties uh, who are professional managers uh, dealing with business combinations. Uh, then uh, the process could be it, uh, the deal closes uh, through negotiations uh, between the buyer and the seller through a proper platform by themselves in the private places or through uh, some inter intermediaries in a common platform. Then rumors or leaks, uh, there are two different things. Rumors are the things where the, there is no information but brokers or uh, some analysts or so they try to cook up and try to influence the price of the respective companies at the uh, target company or the acquiring company. They try to benefit out of it. So actually there is no, uh, uh, there is no scope of a business combination between any two companies but they try to cook up something that we can call it as a pure rumor. But leak is something which is a, a serious issue where a target company and business uh, uh, acquiring company, they are working on uh, the business combination, but nothing has been finalized, but uh, internally or uh, some other associated persons, they leak it out. That is, uh, that has a, a more impact on the business. So uh, it, it, it may happen that uh, future value, post deal value may come down or go up, and it may also uh, bring uh, troubles to the acquirer if it is prospect to, to acquire the target and he, uh, the company may demand a premium price. Uh, the other way, it may also fall down because uh, the investors and other people may or the other stakeholders may react negatively to that. And sometimes it may happen so badly that uh, the deal uh, gets abandoned. Then, uh, Something on uh, through this paper, why information leaks? Usually the public listed companies have NDAs. Uh, it's an agreement for non-disclosure of, uh, of any fact or information or inputs or process related to the uh, uh, merger and acquisition deal. Uh, I think here, uh, uh, I just would like to uh, put a point. Uh, I think uh, uh, takeover is not considered because that, is, that happens by buying and uh, or acquiring the shares, not just the business uh, acquisition. So this is more of uh, mergers and acquisitions. Uh, so the three major reasons why uh, leaks uh, happen in uh, during or just before the deal uh, gets done, it's a management inability or carelessness uh, uh, to keep it confidential or uh, uh, t not taking care of the documents or mails or messages. Uh, uh, and uh, that could be the internal re major internal reason. Then sometimes the, uh, it happens randomly without any intention to leak it. And uh, uh, the problematic reason could be the intentional leaks where the stakeholders 
of the uh, acquiring company or the target company they are interested in this information to leak out because they strongly have the desire to uh, make this deal happen because they will benefit out of it or uh, maybe employees the salaries may go up new perks will come organization culture will change positively thinking and negatively uh, if you look at this they may feel they are scared of a new company acquiring their own company they try to leak it out uh, so that uh, it spreads uh, in the market and it gets discounted negatively in the market so like that like these employees it could be suppliers sometimes customers managers anyone could intentionally leak it out uh, for negative reasons or positive reasons from the acquirer side as well as the uh, target company side both so the major outcomes of the our impact of the leaks could be that deal doesn't get done yeah, it, it doesn't happen there are two ways it could be successful or not successful but uh, if it is more uh, uh, unproductive it results negatively then uh, the deal value may go positive or negative and uh, it, it uh, uh, damages employee morale yeah, that can also happen the productivity may be low or come down during the process or post merger then damage sales may also happen then stock manip manipulation i think we are uh, talking uh, just now about that many analysts i think uh, recently when uh, uh, exxon was trying to acquire uh, pioneer everyone was wondering whether it was really a, a news or rumor so price was a little this way and that way because this is not the time for a company to acquire oil industry with the advent of electric cars and so on but in reality when uh, the ceo of uh, exxon uh, when he finalized that yeah we are buying it for 59 billion dollars then they confirmed that it is not a leak it is not a rumor it is real so these are the major uh, uh, knock on uh, effects of leaks on the market and uh, uh, externally and uh, on the employees internally then rumors are more active and uh, they are productive actually in traders point of view uh, some some people uh, they intentionally create the rumors and uh, try to make it out because uh, rumors are short lived the traders uh, try to benefit out of it and the intraday trades or uh, buy today sell tomorrow kind of uh, strategies then it's quite common uh, uh, public listed companies and the research says that the impact of unintentional rumors is less pronounced than uh, uh, intentional rumors so intentional rumors are very strong uh, affecting the market uh, capitalization or market value of uh, the target company or the acquiring company so this study uh, this paper uh, analyzes and uh, determines the impact of uh, unlisted companies m&a rumors or information leaks rumors or leaks on the deal completion or deal closing propensity so whether it will happen or not what is the probability that that gets closed or not that's the first uh, dimension the other dimension is what happens to its uh, transaction value so these these are the two major areas uh, the paper wants to work on and uh, i think uh, it is not that easy uh, to uh, do the work to do the research in uh, on uh, 68000 plus companies in 88 uh, countries spread in uh, 18 different industries that was a major challenge and i would love to interact with the authors how they how they did it and so on that was, that is a very precious experience to share Uh, I had that. That's Zip. Right that would have been probably from the MBO. And then the, yeah, work got quite easy. So yeah, it's a, I mean, it's, just, it's a question of how much they, they have, right? So, for example, it's good data, really expensive, so that's a problem. Okay. FAU subscribed for that? Mm -hmm. I thought no.
So why authors choose uh, uh, only unlisted companies uh, in spite of uh, public listed companies where uh, data is abundant and it is available anytime in terms of the news or the prices or uh, tick level data is available, publicly available. Uh, but they have chosen this because of uh, these major reasons. So unlisted target uh, leaves limited reasons for rumors. Rumors could be there uh, with uh, unlisted companies, but they are not widespread. The outcomes are not widespread and impact is very less com compared to public listed companies. And rumors may arise uh, unintentionally due to carelessness in the negotiation process. Then someone may spread a rumor on purpose to affect the likelihood of transaction, closing and uh, deal value, which happens in uh, public listed companies again. And uh, the major thing is this uh, study rules out the noise of uh, public stock market where public limited companies' uh, uh, value is instantly affected by the rumor or the leak which is spread in the market. But there are some limitations as uh, there is no regulatory uh, requirement to disclose the uh, uh, deal considerations like uh, NDA requirement is there uh, in uh, a listed company. So that is missing here. Then transaction values are not observable, are observable frequently for the sample. This is a major challenge and they have uh, put a lot of models into it uh, to, to do a simulation kind of thing. Because in the listed uh, company, in a, uh, uh, the deal is about a listed, uh, two listed companies, then uh, the value changes every day or every minute uh, in a day. But in the case of uh, unlisted company, the information leak and its impact uh, is very difficult to substantiate because its value is not known, not traded. So th these two are the major demerits or limitations or the disadvantages because of uh, targeting the unlisted firms. Then the framework of this research is first to determine the likelihood of an uh, m and rumor emerging or not, then uh, allow the scope to estimate the probability of uh, deal consummation, what is the probability, so on a um, scale of 0 to 1 as a binary variable, then uh, uh, to trace a deal value observability, observability, so to what extent if it is happening, yes. But if it is one, to what extent the value gets influenced by this leak, which I mentioned in the first uh, stage, and whether it is positive or negative, and then to what extent. And control for the, it has a control for the conditional effects on consideration for a rumor, emerging transaction closing, and deal value being observed. So this is the model, that's how it was done. Then uh, major challenges, uh, the author says that potential sources of transaction rumors are uh, not measurable, They're difficult to measure, I was saying in the previous slides also, and unobservable. This necessitates the need to model jointly. So emergence of an uh, m and transaction rumor and its impact on deal closing means yes or not, disclosure of deal value and the deal value itself, positive or negative. These two are put together, modeled in this research. And estimation is also cha challenging as rumors may be spread uh, intentionally or uh, randomly, accidentally. Then uh, to face this uh, challenge, indirect influence uh, methodology is used. Which is uh, similar to uh, uh, Monte Carlo simulations, which happens in research methods uh, uh, to um, uh, any sim simulation based estimation technique, which is based on uh, the requirements like uh, it should be possible to simulate the model, um, there should be some, sco some scope or some clue to uh, do the simulation and a simple auxiliary model needs to exist, which, is, which should be suitable for maximum likelihood least squares or moment-based assessment. 
So the accuracy is valid, validated uh, via Monte Carlo simulations and identify the model parameters using the empirical data. This is the methodology. So to simplify it, uh, they just uh, narrated uh, how it goes on. So to start with, uh, is there a leak or not? If a leak is there, it is 1. If there is no leak, it is 0. If leak is there, it, it gets closed or not. If it is closed means 1. If it is not closed means 0. Not closed means there is no discussion on valuation, price doesn't exist. If it is closed, he has given a positive side of the deal closure value with 0.16 uh, premium times the PO means the deal agreed value. So that's how they have given. If that happens in the case, if it is uh, 1, means there is a leak. In the other way, if there is no leak, means the binary variable is uh, 0, leak is 0. Then further, if there is no leak, the deal happens or not, closes or not. So yes means 1, no means 0. So again, if uh, it doesn't close, there is no discussion on valuation. And uh, if it is closed, then again, there should be a price equated in, uh, through simulation. Then the, these are the data sources I was showing you earlier also. Zephyr is the major source to know more about the acquirer and target company in terms of uh, their origin, industry, origin in the sense where they belong to, which country, because we have spread to 88 countries. Then uh, deals closed or not, deal, enterprise value, initial equity of uh, state of the acquirer. In the target, uh, uh, they, they mentioned in the variable as toe hold. Is there any stake of the acquirer in the target company before the negotiation or the before the deal got com completed? Is that a buyout or a kind of equity exchange or not? Then number of acquirers, is that only one or more than one? Is that uh, the deal is rumored or not? Then uh, target company's age, how old is the target company? Size of the target company measured in terms of assets. Then targets uh, HHI. Then they also had the uh, um, data uh, resource from uh, Thomson Reuters and uh, Worldscope. Worldscope is the major source for industry information. They can give the year for the HHI releasing the index. They, yeah, they, I mean, it's not the major I mean, it's, it's used. Okay. So not, not the only one, but. Generally for uh, the HHI index. Because in many papers, instead of CRISP or some other sources, uh, I see in uh, world scope when they're talking about uh, industry. Yes. Then the variables I just listed for a little understanding. The dummy variables are uh, the closing, leak, type of the acquirer. Type of the acquirer is interesting and has a, a, a good role in this uh, study. Is that an individual, government, a financial acquirer, or strategic acquirer, and others uh, are also included which are not in this uh, uh, list of four. Then is that a buyout or not? Is that a local deal? Local in the sense acquirer is in the acquirer and target are in the same country. That is, that is the meaning of uh, a local deal. And same industry, both the target and uh, acquirer belonging to the same industry. Then explanatory variables, uh, these are the uh, kind of regressors which affect uh, the dependent variable leak. Acquirer experience means uh, the age of uh, the acquiring company. Uh, uh, then age, it is the age of the target company. Assets refers to size of the target uh, company. Then HHI uh, refers to the respective industry which acquirer and uh, target company belongs to. Then uh, MNA market, uh, it is a uh, market volume in pre-transaction year as the deal date. Then number of acquirers, one or more. Number of sources, uh, uh, sources for uh, information leak. There could be many, uh, uh, the paper listed uh, five or six sources. Uh, so number of sources uh, could be one or more than one. So the price is the deal value. Then toe hold, they defined it as the stake of the acquiring company and the target company. 
then leak instrument variable is for the rumor leak which is defined as a number of uh, rumor deals within the total number of deals in the same country and industry as the focal deal over the last uh, 12 quarters preceding it so three years so some statistical information or just numbers in the first column we have uh, the deal information not leaked deal information leaked and in the first row we have deal closed and the deal not closed and uh, when you look at that uh, when the information is not leaked the closed deals were 38,627 and not closed were 11,977 and when the information leaks you can see the number is uh, 6,000 63 and uh, leaked is 11,377 so again it is uh, 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 compared as a proportion to the totals in the third and fourth columns and in the last row also and uh, there uh, uh, the study presented uh, uh, good information about the deals rumors and uh, uh, leaks for the period from 1997 to 2007 year wise and uh, first two columns are the year and number of uh, deals and the second segment you can see the closed out of for example 97 out of 82 uh, closed were 81 not closed were 1 and leaked were 6 not leaked were uh, 76 so apart from the segments from 97 to 99 and 2000 to 2017 there is no clear trend they are randomly uh, they, we can't say uh, they are increasing or decreasing kind of trends they are randomly distributed then industry pattern uh, again the same numbers are distributed among the industries starting from chemicals to uh, wood co uh, cork and paper but interestingly the other services uh, was huge uh, i think the, i was excited what were those services were the, that was around 19074 out of 68044 uh, uh, so That was not mentioned. <laughs> I think software is missing here. <laughs> yeah. Technology, IT, yeah, that's missing here. Yeah, I couldn't find anywhere. I just gone through. Yeah, yeah. there's a reason. It's impossible for, for industry pattern to not include IT. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that means what would have happened was if they separated IT from other services, maybe it it seems it could there could be maybe it's it's uh, I think it's it'd be overrated, wouldn't it? It just okay. seems like it. This is really so maybe that's why if you take IT, so what they did is they lumped it as other services mm -hmm. instead of overweighting it for one specific, then it will raise other questions. Okay. Because it's, it's I mean, usually other is a small number. <laughs> this is, this is like, like, this is, it seems like there, there must be four or five. Yeah. High industry, because if you, the highest tier is 9,000, other mm. services is 19. Uh, that's a bit um, crazy. So I think they would have, it must have been overweighted in one way or another because it's lumped into other. I suspect. Because it's a bit, it's a bit uh, suspicious. Did they use some. What's the classification here? Is it from a French or. This is at the. Or they did it themselves? Yeah, uh, they did it themselves based on uh, uh, World Scope HHI. Yeah, the HHI, yeah. <laughs> they just, so, it's, so that's what I mean, right? So, so if let's say, let's assume IT. Because I mean, they say post and telecom, let's say. 
software, software or something. Software would be like, yep, but it, it works out for them, but it's always <laughs> a question of is it possible for other services to be so large? I think again within that, uh, within the industry distribution also, there is uh, apart from the other which has uh, eight numbers, I think rest of them are around 60. It is not too small or too large kind. <clears throat> then uh, sources of leaks, uh, this is quite interesting. Uh, it, uh, it was uh, based on the acquirer type who leaked the information uh, they have uh, categorized. So when they had 17,440 leaks which had been showing in the ta previous tables also, it was categorized uh, into different sources of leaks uh, based on the types of acquirer, strategic acquirer, financial acquirer and unspecified. So I think they are in the descending order. Strategic acquirer had, was the source for most of the leaks which is 9,434. More than 50% of the leaks are from uh, strategic acquirer quite interesting so they they are acquiring the target company for a strategy and they themselves are the source of uh, the information that is uh, one segment then based on the leaks by information side uh, again they have categories of unspecified acquirer other vendor target and none uh, so again here unspecified had more uh, sources as a uh, uh, more information sources in the league side. But it makes sense for the strategic acquirer to want to leak or, or benefit from the leak because it's a strategic of acquisition. Hmm. And especially if you're looking at acquisition could be based on cash or stock, right? Uh. So if the leak is positive or the leak, uh, the positive or negative, it's just a leak to say it's a strategy that the acquirer is oh. So therefore, they need to Got their it. own stock price. Okay, okay. So therefore, then the, the, the acquisition oh. is cheaper, right? So it, it, it's, it's logical um, okay. for, for, for both strategic and financial. For governments, it doesn't make <laughs> I think it's a, a hardly at 1% gone. Okay. <laughs> then uh, so these are the variables. Uh, uh, like I was explaining the in the source of data for what data they are uh, accessing uh, different uh, data sources. So this is the list of uh, the variables. The age, age of the target company, assets, the size of the target company, HHI, the industry, which, which they belong to, to hold the acquirer stake in the uh, target company before the deal. The number of acquirers, one or more, acquirer experience, m and market, a leak instrument va uh, variable, price, the deal value, and number of sources. And I, I think I already uh, listed uh, the list of uh, variables, dummy variables. Three were listed in the papers table. Buyout, local deal, and uh, same industry. Then uh, this is the... Uh, Regression table, it has uh, the, with the leak as the dependent variable, it has uh, many other sources. So here, uh, the first column recognizes the flag for rumor transactions on several covariates, industry and country fixed effects. It reveals uh, that the leak IV instrument uh, Describing the historic emergence of uh, transaction rumors strongly and statistically significantly affecting the current uh, uh, rumor likelihood. The model also shows that amended transaction rumors uh, intensify, intensity increases with the larger targets. Uh, so the, that's the reason uh, asset is re assets relationship is positive uh, means uh, uh, larger the uh, target company's value, more is the intensity. Sorry, intensity. This is the same one extended with uh, the source of leak by leak by acquirer. 
leak by target, leak by vendor, leak by others and uh, leak by unspecified. So finally, the findings of the study state that MNDA rumors are deal breakers for sure as 26.11% of the transactions were rumored before their announcement or failure and 34% ultimately failed. The deal didn't get closed. And rumored but closed deals have higher transaction values, 16% more than more com compared to the non-leaked values. So it is a it could be the reason that intentionally someone has leaked that for a higher price of the or the deal, higher deal value of the uh, transaction. The, the combined economic impact of uh, about two uh, the, is strongly negative. The rumors destroy about 32.42% of the transaction values. So leaks are so dangerous with the unlisted companies. And finally, the study reveals trade-off among m and uh, deal partners. So it, it is a win-win situation kind of thing. The target company wants more price, acquiring company wants to have a cheaper price. So accordingly, they may have some uh, uh, plans to leak out the information kind of thing, but there will be a trade-off. So the seller leaks for a premium price at the cost of an unsuccessful deal. So that's costly. They, they may trade for uh, uh, low price, this uh, sorry, uh, premium price, high price, but at the same time, there is a risk that the deal may not happen. So, sellers have to be careful. At the same time, buyer leaks for a low price at the cost of an unsuccessful deal. So, that there should be a trade off. Even others, uh, competitors, other stakeholders like competitors, managers, media, politicians, shareholders, stakeholders, vendors, and others for individual motives, they also have that trade off. So politicians here, maybe in case of a public sector company, the, when the government owns uh, a company in a country, maybe their uh, politicians' role is there. That's how, that's how I felt. So it's hard to say because it depends on what, what they mean as politicians, right? So if some guy on Congress, yeah, the leak, I mean, does he have any control about government-owned entities? So as a politician, it's very hard to, to really identify. And some countries, it's more centralized. Okay. So, like, if, if a Chinese politician does something, then then they know it's linked to a state-owned entity. But if some guy from Virginia <laughs> is like in the U.S., it doesn't really matter. But one thing that it be, it would have been interesting if they were able to look at the deal closure, to what extent it was, how is the deal uh, structured? Maybe not in all countries, but let's say in the U.S., right? Let's say if you look at whether it's uh, it, it's it's a uh, it's a swap, whether oh. it's you know whether it's an equity swap, whether it is it is cash, whether I mean they have leverage buyouts, but leverage buyouts is very different because that just means that they are taking on debt, right? So it's not the same as the cash or so yeah. So so cash versus versus equity because then that would identify the motivation of the buyer and the seller because you know the leak how it affects. Uh, the term structure, but they don't have the data here, but that'd be interesting to see. Okay. But yeah, so, I mean, and, and, when, and one of the things uh, that uh, this, this paper is interesting, yeah, Zephyr data, many, many papers use Zephyr or Volcom, so it, the data is relatively easy to get, uh, but here I think it's the idea of the leaks versus a lot of, there's a lot of studies on analyst okay. uh, recommendations here, it's unofficial information trickling down to the market, uh, especially, and so from an entrepreneurial perspective, that's why it, it's, it straddles both because it's quite unique in their approach where they're using rumors and, and, so, and there's rumors, the difference between rumors and leaks, right? But yet at the same time, in, in, in a perfect market, this is, this is, this, would this be priced in or is it something that is relatively new for us to consider? Uh, and, and, it's, and it's, again, Interesting because you don't have the you you, you remove the market from the from the issue uh, because it's 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 private company it's not publicly listed company because publicly listed company the problem is there's the, the leaks are where, how does it come you know it comes from multiple sources analysts and all that mm -hmm. here there's no analyst coverage right yeah. Yeah. Cool. thank you very thank much. you.